are building a church inside a church. Somebody say building a church inside a church. Our God is called a master builder. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10, our God is called a master builder. Let's open our Bibles in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, and take note of the last one, you are God's building. Praise the Lord. You are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, and you are God's building. Take note of that. I have said that our God is a wise master builder. And we are God's building. Our God is a wise master builder. But we are God's building. So the wise master builder builds a building. And which building does he build? Us. So we are built by God. Amen. Amen. In the book of Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, Jesus gives us a revelation of this same. And he says, and I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build. Who will build? Jesus will build. And that also strengthens the fact that our God is a builder. Jesus said that I will build my church. And the gates of heads shall not prevail against it. So the Lord Jesus will build his church. And the gates of hell shall not do what? Prevail against the church. Now, dear servant of God, when the Lord talks about the church, what is he referring to? There are two levels of the church. We have the individual church who is us. A believer who believes in Christ Jesus in himself is a church. First Corinthians 3, I think it's verse um, 16. I don't know if it's 16. First Corinthians 3, that talks about us being the, the church. Yes. 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? That one is addressing an individual you. You are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. Somebody say, I am the temple of God. And the spirit of God dwells in me. Do you believe that? That is what God says. And God does not lie. It doesn't matter your opinion in this. That is what he says. Kwamba wewe ni ekalu la mungu Na roho wake buwana anaketi ndani mwako. Hata kama wamini, hivyo ndiyo ukweli ulivyo. Na kama wamini basi, wewe si mkristo. Kwa maana kama huwezi amini ukweli kama huu. Basi ujafanyika mwana. That is the church number one. But now we have the spiritual housing, the house. I can say the spiritual house, the congregation. Hallelujah. Where Peter, 2 Peter 2.5. Let's go to 2 Peter 2.5. Mm, thank you. You also as a living stones, you also as living stones 
are being built up as a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So here, the servant of God receives a revelation again that we are living stones that build the spiritual church. Now, as we talk about Holy Gate of Heaven, this is a community of God that is bound together by the shared life, purpose, and vision. As we sit here, we are a community of God that is bound together by shared life, a purpose, and vision. We are moving under shared life. We agree to the same doctrine of God. We agree to the same way of God. We are one house. All of us, we are the church. We are a community. But now, we see that Peter talks about we are living stones. That is the first church I talked about, the individual church, the temple of God. The Bible says that, don't you know that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you? This temple is a living stone. Quavo, the, the Bible talks, we are a living stone. We have life. Something that is spiritually peculiar. So these stones are shaped and when they are put together, they become a spiritual house. He is the architect. Jengo hili ambalo limejengwa na buwana ni jengo ambalo ni thabiti sana. Lina utukufu na uthabiti very firm. is built on a firm foundation which cannot be shaken by any turbulence of life. Kwa hivyo, Christo, he is the builder of our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are stones. But something peculiar about these stones, the stones are shaped. Mawe ambayo ya mekatwa katika viwango flan. And you know very well, if you go to a quarry where stones are shaped, it just looks a very shapeless rock. You see, in fact, when you see those people who break that thing, the, the people who break the thing, they come out as just very big, shapeless rocks. True or false? They come out as very big, shapeless rocks. Then they take those shapeless rocks, they put it on a machine that now will produce a shape of a stone that will be used to bring the shape of the building. Or else, we could be having walls somewhere there is a wall that is just protruding outside or inside. And that will look so bad. It will look so shapeless. And also, it will also be a wall that is weak in one way or another. The stones that are shaped, they merge one another, they sit on one another, and they make a very formidable foundation. The Bible says we are those living stones which the Lord has shaped. Amen? And when he has built us, when God has built us, we become a house that the enemy cannot prevail against. So when God is addressing the church, he is addressing both the two churches. The church inside a church. So you are a church inside the church. I am a church inside the church. I am the living stone inside the living house. I am a living stone inside the house of God. So God is addressing both the stone which was shaped by him and he's also, he's addressing the whole church because you know the beauty of the whole structure is determined by the beauty of the stones. 
The beauty of the whole church is determined by the individual beauty of you. Na kama Bwana hajakuchonga kwa mawe ambayo iko na shape yake, hawezi kutumika kujenga kanisa. Kumbuka Mungu anasema hivi katika kitabu cha Wafilipi moja sita kwamba kazi nzuri the good work that he has begun being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ God has begun a good work in me God has begun a good work in you what is this work this is the work you are a shapeless stone that did not have shape wakati uligongolewa kutoka katika uzao wenu ulikuwa mawe ambayo haina msingi haina mfano hayawezi kutumika kujenga yametupwa pale tu yapo tu hayana msingi lakini wakati Mungu amekupata katika ile shape kwa hivyo anakuchonga chonga kwa hivyo unakuwa mawe ambayo anakuchukua anakuweka katika mawe mengine na unafanya hekalu la Bwana. Kwa hivyo hekalu la Mungu halijengwi na mawe moja. Hekalu la Bwana linajengwa na mawe yote. Mawe ambayo kulingana na vile Bwana amedesign kanisa lake, kila mawe ambayo Bwana amayaleta kanisani yana umuhimu katika jengo lake. So God is a master builder who has started the good work in us. And he has promised us that he will bring this work to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. And I believe this day is the day of the coming back of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when God saved you, you began the journey. Kama wewe ni mtu wa kukuja ibada Jumapili na unaleta material ya Jumapili peke yake, nyumba yako itaisha lini? Na Kristo anasema kwamba you Peter who is us the thing was not just being addressed to Peter alone we are the present Peter we are the church which Christ is addressing it was a prophetic word to you and to me and to the body of Christ that he is going to build the church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against us so it is the will of God that the gates of hell will not prevail against us as people individually and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church as a spiritual house but when you look at the condition of the church that we are in it is not so the gates of hell are prevailing against many people and many people are under the customs and the, the manipulation of gates of hell yet they are in a spiritual house it is because they have not provided the material for their house to be built by God so that the house can be complete and the house can stand against the wicked ways of Satan kanisa limejaa watu ambao hawana haja ya maombi kwa sababu wanaona pengine mchungaji anaomba atutidiklee akuja tuweke mikono atutolee unabii sisi tuende katika shughuli zetu kwa hivyo watu hawa wamebaki mawe ambayo haiwezi kutumika na Mungu ama wamebaki jumba ambalo liko weak adui anapolenga tumshale basi jumba hili linaporomoka and that is why we cannot prevail against the devil in fact ironically Watu wanaogopa shetani kuliko vile wanamuogopa Kristo. In the church, I'm talking about the church. Kitu cha kwanza, watu wengi hawako tayari kujengwa. Kitu cha pili, watu wengi they are not available to be built. Kitu cha tatu, watu wengi hawawezi kukubali kulipa gharama ya kujenga. Number one, you must be ready to be built. Number two, you must be available to be built. Number three, you must pay the cost of building. Bwana Yesu akasema kwamba ni nani ambaye anataka kujenga gorofa katika kitabu cha Luke 
14:28. Who will want to build a tower? Look, Jesus is addressing who? Us. And he will not sit down and count the cost. Kwa hivyo sisi kujengwa na Mungu lazima tutoe material ya kujenga na material ndio hiyo gharama. Na hiyo gharama Mungu mwenyewe ametuonyesha katika neno lake. Ni vitu kadhaa wa kadha ambavyo vitakufanya uwe katika shape ambayo Bwana atakutumia. Lazima namba 1 ukubali. Namba 2 lazima ukuwe available. Namba 3 lazima uhesabu gharama ya kujenga ama kujengwa. Hatuko available wapendwa. Wengi pengine tumekubali. Yes. Yes Lord. Lakini baada ya kusema yes tulipotea. We are not available. Hatutaki pia kulipa gharama. Wapendwa. Hakuna umuhimu katika kukujenga kama Mkristo kuja kanisani Jumapili. Nakwambia ukweli. Hakuna umuhimu ibada ya Jumapili haitakutosheleza kujenga Ukristo wako ufaulu kinyume na adui. Hautaweza kufaulu. Get it from me or refuse or have your opinion that is the truth. Jesus said for the one who desires to come after me must take up his cross number 1 deny himself number 2 and follow me how many days Follow me weekly monthly uh, after on Sunday Jesus says must follow me daily That means for you to build your spiritual house, there must be consistency in provision of the building material. Na Biblia inasema hivi, the Lord has put his treasure in earthen vessels. Nukweli? Who is the earthen vessel? Me. But now I want you to think. Earthen vessel ni kitu kama nyungu. Ukweli ama si ukweli? Ni nyungu, sindio? Unawekanga nyungu iliyoumbwa ikachomwa vizuri ama nyungu ambayo bado iko ijaiva ija, ija, ija Eh Yenye Siku hizi unajua watu ambao wamesoma ukienda kwa nyumba ya mtu uone nyungu utafikiria ni mchawi But nataka nikufunze hivi hekima Siku za kitambo Athen vessels zilikuwa the treasure ilikuwa kama banks Bwana Yesu asifiwe Hizo siku hizo ndio zilikuwa banks yani kulikuwa na mahali ambapo uh, palikuwa pamekuwa prescribed na ilikuwa inatengenezwa na hiyo udongo wanaweka gold and silver ndani mwake kwa hivyo ilikuwa inafunikwa na inawekwa udongo ambao umechomwa na utaona kwamba process ya purification kabla nyungu haijatengenezwa huwa inapitia udongo inachukuliwa Kwanza kabisa inakaushwa si ni kweli inapokaushwa ikishakauka inagongolewa inasiagwa ikishasiagwa wanaokota all the stones and every impurity ambayo iko kwa hiyo udongo yule ambaye anamfinyanzi anajua kwamba any small particle ikibaki katika udongo huo itasababisha hicho chombo kupasuka wakati kitakuwa kimeiva ama kinachomwa na moto Akishamaliza kuondoa all the impurities anachukua hiyo mchanga anaichanganya na maji sasa anapoichanganya anaichanganya kabisa anasiaga and that is why when you read the book of Jeremiah is it 28 the Lord told Jeremiah I want you to go to the potter's house okay can we go to that scripture I want you to go to the potter's house that is Jeremiah 18:15 Jeremiah 18:15 This is what the scripture says The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying Arise and go down to the potter's house and there will be a cause there I will cause you to hear my words Then I went down to the potter's house and there he was making something at the wheel I will explain that the vessel that he made of the clay. It was the vessel of? 
say clay was mad yani ilikuwa imechanganywa na maji iko very soft uh -huh. so he made it again into the vessel another vessel as it seemed good to the potter na huyu potter alikuwa anatoa shape ya kile chombo chenye anataka akiona hakiko sawa anaivunja tena anaitengeneza sikia sasa kile Mungu anaambia Yeremia Then the word of God came to me saying O oh house of Israel can I not do with you as this potter says the Lord look at as the clay is the potter in the potter's hands so are you in my hand Kwa hivyo Bwana anaambia Yeremia vile udongo unafinyangwa na yule mfinyanzi hivyo hivyo ndio nyinyi mko katika mikono yangu the process ya Mungu inaenda pole pole na ndio sababu Biblia inasema kwamba wakati Potter alikuwa anafanya kazi there was a will that was willing that means it was happening in seasons and out of seasons it was a process that was continuous it was not ending ukiangalia will vile inazunguka hakuna end kwa hivyo the construction and the building of God to your life has no end. It is a continuous process even unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But you must accept to be built by God. Wakati nyungu imewekwa mahali pa kukauka ambapo most of the time it is in a shed. Inakauka siku mingi. Pale imetulia tu. Nothing is happening. Imefanya nini? Na kuna season katika maisha yako unafaa utulie tu. Unakaushwa. We want to rush things. Weka hii nyungu kwa ma, kwa, 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 nini, kwa moto haraka haraka. Weka kwa sani kauke. Mungu anataka tayari amekutengeneza lakini anataka ufanye nini? Tulia tu. Be patient. Be still and see the salvation of God. Relax ile nyungu inapokauka vizuri baada ya kukaushwa vizuri mfinyanzi huja anaicheck ana confirm kwamba hakuna mahali kuna impurity na crack baada ya hiyo anaipeleka the last process ambaye inaitwa kuchomwa na moto anaitia kwa moto moto inaichoma mpaka ile nyungu inabadilisha kala inafanana kama moto inamaanisha zile impurities ambazo zilikuwa zimebaki ambazo mtu the pot hakuona zinakaushwa na nini na moto ile nyungu ikishakaushwa hauwezi kumwagilia maji tapasuka inaachwa tena yenyewe ifanye nini ipowe pole 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 na inaweza chukua siku baadaye inachukuliwa kama imeshapoa inaoshwa sasa ile nyungu iko tayari kuwekwa treasures hapo ndio tunaona sasa bila inasema kwamba and he has put his treasures in earthen vessel. Mungu hawaiki treasure kwa vessel ambaye haiko complete. Kwa hivyo tuko katika ile process wapendwa ambapo lazima tukubali kufinyangwa na Mungu. Wakati sasa chombo chetu kimepitia hiyo process, Bwana anaweza kuweka vitu vyake vya dhahabu. Haya maandiko watu tunaisoma na wakati mwingine tunaikiri lakini tunakosa kuwa na kuelewa haikuji tu ati Mungu anaweka treasure ndani mwako hivyo hivyo bure lazima chombo chako kiwe tayari ambapo sasa Mungu ataanza kuweka treasure kwa sababu kimeandaliwa na kiko tayari kuwekwa vitu vya dhamana unafaa utambue pia nyumba yako kuisha chombo chako kuisha inategemea na wewe mwenyewe kuna watu ambao wanaingia katika uwepo wa Mungu wanakuwa haraka sana kuelewa kile Mungu anataka wanakuwa haraka kufata kile Mungu anafanya na watu hawa muda wao wa kutengenezwa unakuwa muda ambaye si mrefu kama wengine na unajua wakati Mungu anakutengeneza kumbuka kwamba muda ambayo Bwana ametupa ni neema yake it is his grace it is his grace at our disposal that is a time of preparation lakini unaweza kutengenezwa na bado ubaki nyuma mpaka wakati Kristo anafika. Hauko tayari. Your vessel, 
your house has not been completed. Or else, even before Jesus comes, the wind will come and the house has been there for long. It has been weak. The wind will blow what you have been able to do and the house will fall and it will break and it will take you to square one. When will you finish it? When you sacrifice for God, when you heed to the word of God, the value of your house depends on the value of the material you're providing. The question is, is that house strong enough to stand against the gates of hell? Nataka kuambia kanisa la mungu, na nisikizeni vizuri. The gates of hell are not joking. The gates of hell have plans against every one of us. Any man who is alive is a target of Satan. And the reason you are not dead is because God has preserved you. The gates of hell are not joking about your life. The gates of hell are not joking. They are campaigning. They are working out. They are planning. They are sitting on tables. They are launching things. While the gates of God are joking. Watu mungu, we are relaxed. We don't pray. We come to church once on Sunday. And even some Sundays you are not there. And you don't listen to God. And tomorrow, when things will fall apart, you start blaming where is God. God has given us his wisdom. God has given us his revelation. It is up to us to take it. Or if you reject it, it is at your own peril. But I want to tell you and challenge you. It is an individual challenge, not as a congregation. It is your individual challenge. Because when you arise, I arise, she arise, he arise, they arise, we will all arise. We will be a strong church. When you allow God to shape you, God to shape her, God to shape me, we will build on one another. The stone will sit on another. Kuna ile mawe iko chini kabisa na kuna ile mawe iko juu. They are all playing the role of God. Ile iko chini hizi sema na kwa nini nyinyi wote mmenilalia? Sometimes in the church we are like that. Hii uzito yote iko kwangu. It is not. It is comfortable there. Because it can carry that weight without any problem. That is the life of a Christian. But when Christians, believers, they confess the Lord, but they left their journey there, they never take an initiative. Salvation is not a confession you had only. That was the beginning. Salvation has to go through the process of sanctification where God sanctifies you and God makes you to take his shape and look like him. It can't be okay with you if you are not following the process of God. Don't be deceived. It can't be well with you if you are not inside this thing I'm talking about. It can't. Even the strongest men become weak if they allow the weakness to take over for long. Praise the name of the Lord. We have an identity in Christ Jesus as believers. And God has called us. But remember one thing, I'm almost finishing now. There is something that God tells us which I want us to be aware and it's like a warning. And it came through the parable of the dragnet. In the book of Matthew 13 and 47. Matthew 13. You have read about the parable of the dragnet. And I want you to hear this. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind. Praise the Lord. Some of every kind. Continue. Which when it was full, they drew to the shore they sat down and gathered the good vessel 
but threw the bird away. Continue. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just. Continue. And cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Wakati ulisikia neno la Bwana, hile neno lilikuwa the dragnet. Sisi sote tuliingia katika ile neti. Lakini kuna watu ambao tumeingia katika neti na tumebaki tumekataa kuwa samaki sisi ni chura. I believe that it is your choice to become fish. Kwa hivyo Biblia inasema kwamba ufalme wa Mungu unalinganishwa na mtu ambaye alienda na nyavu alipotupa nyavu ikashika vitu. Na vile vitu vilishikwa sio vyote ambavyo vina umuhimu katika nyumba ya Mungu. Mvuvi alipoleta zile vitu alitenga zile nzuri hata samaki kuna samaki wa kila aina na wanatumika kwa sababu zao. Kwa hivyo unaweza kuwa katika hekalu la Mungu na Mungu kweli alikushika na neti. Ulisikia injili, ulikubali, ukaingia ndani lakini umechukua mfano wa nyoka. Umechukua mfano wa krabu. Umechukua mfano ya vitu ambavyo wakati mvuvi atakapokuwa anafanya kutenga vitu vizuri na vibaya utapatikana kwamba wewe unatengwa unaambiwa hauwezi kuwa na umuhimu. You cannot be of use in the kingdom of God. Je, swali langu kwako ni hili. Umechukua mfano wa nini katika nyumba ya Mungu? Wale ambao wanachukua mfano wa samaki ambaye inaweza tumika na Mungu ndio wale ambao wamekubali kuchongwa na Bwana wawe kanisa ndani ya kanisa Mtu ambaye ni kanisa ndani ya kanisa ni mtu ambaye amekubali kutumika na Mungu akati ako kanisani ili alete manufaa fulani na kwa ujumla manufaa yake yanaongeza manufaa kwa kanisa lote Mungu anapoanza ujenzi na mtu anaweza kukujenga mpaka ukwe mjengo mwenye dhamana kabisa ambao kila mtu atapita akiufurahia kila wakati unapo msongea na kuendelea kumtii utaendelea kujengwa na kuongezeka siku baada nyingine wewe utukufu wako unaonekana wapi umekubali kujengwa umekubali Bwana akuweke katika ile shape nzuri na wakati unakubali wewe ni samaki katika dragnet na Mungu anapokuja utaitwa mwana hautaitwa mbuzi bali utakuwa kondoo Bwana atasema huyu akae kwa mkono wangu wa kulia na mbuzi kae kwa mkono wangu wa kushoto when your time passes to do something you will pay a higher cost to do it if you will ever do it you pay a higher cost if you will ever do it but many of us will never again do it when the grace is over you struggle to do it that is why we have to go with the speed of god remember the bible says the wheel of the potter was going up and down rolling 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 seasons were coming and going when the word of god is preached listen brother listen sister don't make your life so difficult ah nitasikia kesho hiyo mchungaji alihubiri powerfully the message was powerful but how powerful has it impacted your life how has it changed you what have you become which christian are you apparently and even ironically watu ambao wanapitia shida ndio watu wagumu sana kusaidika katika ufalme wagumu sana kwa nini mapepo ya kwenu hayawezi yamekushinda kwa nini mimi nimezaliwa kwa familia ambayo umaskini ilikuwa chakula yetu but god has lifted me today and when i'm telling you about god i have not come here to read a book of history i've come here to give you practical examples i'm the testimony of what god can do but there must be a process that i must have gone in kuna process ambayo nimepitia i accepted god to help me to reach and i'm not yet even there hata sijui kama nimefika hata kuota ya maisha yangu i know if i allow god to do i can become greater and greater and there's no limit to it no limit what about you je utasumbuka mpaka dini 
Has God spoken his word and lied? Has God said that you are his royal priesthood and lied? Has God said you are a chosen generation and lied? Has God made you rich and made you are poor? Is God a liar? We are a church built in a church. But we must accept God to shape us and make us what he is. Remember, this grace that God has given us, it is not here forever. It has its limit. It has its expiry date. Kumbuka kwamba, na miaka yako haikungoji. If you cannot do it, Raphael, at this age, what God wants you to do, you will not do it at 60. If you reach 60. But if you allow God to help you, God will take you from glory to glory to glory. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is hard for God. Only if his people believe. Jesus said, have I not told you that if you believe, nothing is impossible? Have I not told you? It is because your faith is dead. That is why things cannot happen. You cannot obey God even once. Things cannot move. And God cannot force himself on you or force you to do it. You must have a willing heart and willing spirit to do it. Will you do it? Will you accept? And let me address the young people here. When I started to know God, I was very young. But because of the poverty and the suffering that I saw in my family, I decided to pursue God at a very young, tender age. And I never gave up on pursuing God. I never gave up on it. Let's stand up on our feet. Will you be serious with God? Will you? Will you? Some of you are not answering. Will you be serious with God, brother? Will you take another turn and begin to do things for God? I want to pray for you that you will and God will help you. Amen? Lift your hand to the Lord. I want you to believe. God has not lifted me to raise failures. The grace God has given me is just hanging on you right where you are. If only you will accept this word God gives me. It's just right there. Lift your hand. Father, I thank you because of the word. I thank you because of those who have believed. And this word has come with power. According to your word that says, I have not spoken the word according to my human wisdom, but I spoken according to the demonstration of the Spirit. I decree right now, my Lord, upon every lifted hand, that indeed, build them to become a church inside this ministry. Build them to become a church inside this church and make them prosperous. And may the grace of this ministry touch them touch their lives and every area that you need God to touch you. In Jesus name. Somebody say amen. Now